homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today it's time to put on our mid-season fertilizer. Now, as the year goes by, now you can go back and look, we've got a, a, a set of, in, a, in our pictures on our College Hill Facebook page, there is a set, and I'll put a picture up here of uh, fertilizer recommendations. Uh, it tells you how much fertilizer to apply in a 100 foot row. So, in other words, if you consider tomatoes in a 100 foot row, we plant somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 tomato plants. So, you can divide it by 50 and that's how much fertilizer you need per tomato. Uh, it all depends on the fertilizer that you have. Now, I did a fertilizer video before. This is kind of an updated fertilizer video because it'll give you a couple more tips on using fertilizer that'll be good for you. Now, when it comes to fertilizer, fertilizer is very water affiliate, meaning it loves water. Uh, it will absorb water right out of the air. So, if you open a bag of fertilizer, they come in plastic sealed, plastic sealed bags. If you open a bag of fertilizer, the water will just dive in there. I know that sounds crazy, but I've got here a five gallon bucket right here. A five gallon bucket that had fertilizer in it last year. Now, I forgot to put the lid on it. Okay, I forgot to put the lid on it. And this is what it looks like this spring. Look at all the water in that fertilizer. And it doesn't even smell like ammonia anymore. So basically all the ammonia is leached out of that fertilizer. And it's uh, not going to be usable for much. Now, will I use it? Absolutely I will. I'll probably put it on the potatoes. Because it has uh, phosphorus and potassium still there. But most of the nitrogen is gone. So... I'll put that on the potatoes. There'll be a little nitrogen, and that'll just happen to be something good for the taters. So that's what you see happens when you leave fertilizer exposed to the air. Doesn't matter if it's in the bag, original bag it came in. Uh, some people seal the bag up, and uh, it will it will do all right. Some people do like I do. Some people mess up and leave it open. Uh, but this is what I usually do. I use plastic containers with lids. These five gallon buckets. And uh, if you've ever stored, how I, how I learned to start doing this, if you've ever stored uh, Portland cement and tried to keep it from one year to the next, you know that if you keep it in the bag it's in, it hardens in the bag. Well, a few years ago, we were working on something, and uh, I had about half a bag of Portland cement left, and I just stuck it in a five-gallon bucket and closed the lid. I could open that today, and that Portland cement is still good. So, I do the same thing, start doing the same thing with the fertilizer, and the fertilizer will be good for a couple of years. Okay? So, I went down to the farm store. Now, I bought, this year, I buy what I can get. Sometimes you get 10, 10, 10. Sometimes you get 12, 12, 12. Uh, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Uh, I use, uh, this year I bought 10, 10, 10, and it cost me, I think, $19.18 a bag. And I use about two bags a year. Well, I've already put on the first half of the year's fertilizer, so I only need one bag. So, but I bought two because you never know what next year's going to bring. You know, it might be hard to find fertilizer. So, I bought two bags. Do I use Miracle-Gro? 
Absolutely, I do sometimes. Okay, Miracle Grow is my preferred for when I plant my sweet potatoes. It's just extra water and nitrogen and potassium and phosphorus all in one big jolt. So, gets those sweet potatoes started off pretty good. Uh, the new ground cloth you've seen us install. I'll probably use miracle Grow on that. I doubt I'll use the granular fertilizer because in order to use the granul granular fertilizer, I'd have to lift the cloth up and throw it back up under there because if I put it right on top of the plants, it'll burn them. So, I'll probably use miracle Grow in there. I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do about that. Uh, next year, I may disperse fertilizer when I plow, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, let's go ahead and get some of this fertilizer in a in a container now a five gallon container how much does it hold five gallons is not a cubic foot okay a cubic foot of water would weigh 62 pounds all right a cubic foot of water would weigh 62 pounds well a cubic uh, a full container of water in a five gallon bucket only weighs 40 pounds so a five gallon bucket is not a cubic foot well if you look on the bag of things like concrete and stuff a 60 pound bag of concrete is two-thirds of a cubic foot so a five gallon bucket will hold a 60 pound bag of concrete almost up, all the way up to the top all right, it'll be all the way up to the top, and you might not be able to get all of it in there. But a 50-pound bag of fertilizer, well, if the volume is the same as with water, there should be a little fertilizer left over from putting a 50-pound bag in here. So let's have a look and see. Again, this is 10, 10, 10, net weight 50 pounds, it's 10% nitrogen, 10% phosphorus, and 10% uh, potassium, okay, or potash, that's what they call potassium. Now let's get this cut open. Now, let's get this in the can. Now what have I got? I've got about a fifth of a bag left. Alright. That is full. Well, what I'll do that's stored for next year. Okay, that'll keep the moisture out, and that will be just fine come uh, April when I start doing the garden. So, but always mark on your stuff. This is 10, 10, 10, 5, 
fertilizer. Always label your stuff because you will forget. Now, one thing I do want to do, I do want to pop this and burp the air a little. There we go. Now it's down. Only air that was in it was what air was available here. So it can't grab additional moisture. Okay. This will keep all winter long and not lose a lot of nitrogen. So it'll, it'll lose some because I can already smell the ammonia. If you smell ammonia, that's what's happening. So that is about 40 pounds of fertilizer. That goes in the barn to wait. Now I'll put some in this one. Probably 10 pounds left there, so 40 pounds fit in that bucket. Okay, remember what I told you last year that a cubic foot of fertilizer or a uh, fertilizer was pretty much ounce per ounce the same volume as they were in pounds. They do it that way on purpose. So this one, ounce per ounce, they're about the same volume. In other words, this was about 62 pounds. Sorry, that was 50, uh, 40, 40 pounds of uh, fertilizer. This is about 50 pounds. So it's a little less than the volume, okay? It's a little less, but not enough to worry about. So if you consider this fertilizer for volume to volume, that's what you want. Now, right here, I've got a 44 ounce cup. Now, I always consider this 44 ounce cup or a 32 ounce cup. You know, I've used the big old McDonald's cups sometimes, the big plastic ones, and use them all, all winter long, but all summer, all, all gardening season long. But uh, I didn't have one, so, but I had one of these big old Ready Mark cups from a big glass of ice water. I quit drinking pop quite some time ago, uh, but I, I do drink a pop every now and then, a Diet Mountain Dew, but they're maybe one a month. Anyway, water's what I drink. So, 44 ounce cup. How many pounds is that? Well, that's almost, almost three pounds worth of fertilizer. So let's, uh, let's get this other bag moved over. Okay, this bucket's full, and I've still got fertilizer in the bag. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop this bucket back. take it with me out to the garden and if there's any left over I'll put it in this empty bucket and seal it up. Now to go out in the garden carrying that five gallon bucket just uh, is hard on an old man. So I don't carry a five gallon bucket. What I've got here, oh there's been water in that. I've got a uh, two and a half gallon Dollar Tree bucket. I buy about 12 of these every two years. Uh, I use them up and throw them away. But these uh, old Dollar Tree buckets are, are handy. Now that's a two and a half gallon bucket. Let's see how much uh, fertilizer I've got left in here. Look at there, almost exactly two and a half gallons. Okay, so two 50 pound bags of fertilizer fills two five gallon buckets and a two and a half gallon bucket. Or in other words, 10, 11, 12, 13, 11, 12 and a half gallons of fertilizer. Now, you can consider it pound for pound So 
throw these bags away. Okay, you can consider it pound for pound exactly the same, okay? So if there's a pound, how many ounces is that? Okay, 16 ounces in a pound. So if you consider it that way, 16 ounces to the pound, and these are actually just a little bit less, okay? A little bit less, but 16 ounces to the pound. Let me get my calculator up and going. And they're 10%, so it's 1.6 ounces per pound. So if I've got a 100 foot row, if I've got a 100 foot row, then, and I need uh, three ounces, I need four pounds or two pounds. Does that make sense? I need two pounds. Well, two pounds is 32 ounces. This cup is 44 ounces. I can come close to estimating it. Now, there's a fallacy about a fertilizer that uh, is just wrong. And I'm going to I'm going to put that out there. Some of the organic gardening folks are going to go crazy. I really don't care. I've done this for 50 some years. Uh, there was has been the thought for a long time that fertilizer, any excess fertilizer runs off and uh, goes into the streams. Now, big corporations putting in massive amounts of fertilizer, that might be the case. But small operations like mine, where I measure my fertilizer to try and get as close as possible, if I put too much fertilizer, it's not going into the stream. It's too far away, the stream's too far away. And secondly, the science has told us that microbes in the soil use that excess nitrogen and turn it into plant matter, which in return goes back into the soil and the carbon is retained. So that is not, runoff is not as big a deal for us small producers. It is a deal for the great big producers, but the little guys, runoff is not a big deal. Still doesn't mean you should over fertilize, that's just irresponsible. But if you fertilize close to correct, if you put a little too much, it's not going to hurt nothing. Let me say that again. If you put too much, it's a little too much, it's not going to hurt nothing. Let's get out in the field and put some fertilizer down. Okay, here's our corn. Let me show you how tall it is. Go stand by it. You'll see my corn. It's right up to about here. So that corn is ready for a second application of fertilizer. Now corn is a heavy feeder. If you don't fertilize it, then you don't get any corn. Now with this, what I'm going to need is I'm going to need about, since this is a doubled row, okay, it's a doubled 100 foot row, I'm going to need about three of these. Only I only filled them to about there. I'm going to need about three of these for the entire row. So I'm going to go down through here and start applying. Now what I do is I take that small bucket and I empty it down some because I don't like carrying uh, 20 pounds down the field. So I'll take this down the field and then start distributing.
Okay, so now, if you look down the field, you'll see where my cup is. So I'll use approximately three of those all the way down that row. Again, you can go to our uh, Facebook page, and there's our, in the photo section, there are two documents. Uh, there actually is pictures, so that you can keep them on your phone. Apparently, I've erased them off my phone. Uh, they're kept as pictures so that what you can do is you can look at the amount of uh, nitrogen needed, multiply the number on your bag. If it's 10, 10, 10, you multiply it by 0.1 and that would, or divide it by 10, and that would tell you how many ounces of nitrogen there are in a pound of your fertilizer. So this has got 1.6 ounces. Well, an entire row of corn needs like three ounces, 3.2 or something like that. So I'm going to put, for two rows of corn, I'm going to put four pounds of fertilizer down through there. Now, let me go ahead and I'll put it on both sets of rows and then we'll come back and go over and do the tomatoes. Okay, the corn's fertilized for the year. Uh, I won't put any more on it. Now what will happen is, in the next little bit, uh, I'll come through here and hoe. I really needed to hoe before I fertilized, but the, the deal was tomorrow it's supposed to rain, and uh, I wanted to get that fertilizer on before the rain came. So if I have to get out there and hoe uh, after it rained, that'll be okay. Uh, but I wanted the, the corn to start getting stuff. Now I want to cut these weeds down before they eat up the fertilizer, but that fertilizer is slow release. So it'll take a while. So I'll go ahead now and get over to the tomatoes. Okay, here we are in our tomato patch. I'm on the wrong side. You can see it down through there, right there. There's our tomatoes. Uh, that's the romas. Now, doesn't matter if you're talking about determinants or indeterminates, I fertilize them exactly the same way. Okay, you can go back. We've got a sheet of paper again, a sheet that's taken a picture on our page that shows you how much nitrogen each one needs. Now I've done the math and for uh, my tomatoes, each tomato needs a tablespoon, or in other words, three teaspoons worth. Am I going to measure that out? Let me show you how I measure it. Here's my fertilizer, and right there is a tablespoon worth, okay, a small handful. So here's how I put them on. See that tomato? It's starting to put on little tomatoes. This is the time that you want to add fertilizer. You just right up under there. The next one I'll do the same way. Right up under it. And the next one. Okay, it's not rocket science. You just have to put fertilizer on them. Okay, it took one and a half cups to do this 100 foot row of these tomatoes. Now let's go over and do some basil. Okay, here's my basil. I'm just going to put about what I would put on my tomato plants. There we go. That'll be plenty for this basil. I need to weed again. Uh, I weeded the other day, but you know, weeds keep coming back. That's the time of year. We got some rain and the basil's really popped up good. So, okay, that's all the fertilizer that basil will get for the year. Usually I do a do miracle Grow, but I just had some fertilizer left over in my bucket and I thought, well, I'll just put it on the basil. Okay, that's how you apply granular fertilizer. Now, uh, 
as far as the basil goes, I won't fertilize it again. Uh, the tomatoes are done. Once they start setting tomatoes on, I don't fertilize, but that's one time. Uh, I am going to do a video on possible tomato problems and how you correct them. So be certain to look out for that video too. Uh, now, if you like this stuff, this homestead and do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homestead and stuff all the time. Now, if you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload on Sundays. Now, it's time for me to get on to the next thing.